So in order to make this work here with one piece, I got to know this dimension here, which is 12 and 3 quarters. Also, I have to take into account the dimension here that I'm going to cut out to do the bend around, which is going to be 4 inches, and that's based on the depth of this section of the trim here. So in a total, I need 12 and 3 quarters plus 4 inches from this point right here. So 16 and 3 quarters. And I need my one inch to bend down. So I need a total of 17 and three quarters, which is, <laughs> that's awesome. We'll go ahead and get this guy here mounted.
<laughs> Out of nails. Oh, it never fails. All right, so we're at a point now on this project where, as you can see, I've got all the stone up to the wainscot trim. I've got this detail done. We've got the J channel around the windows. And the problem is I would love, I would love to keep going on the stone around the chimney because I think it's gonna be visually amazing and it's a lot of work. So if I can get it done, um, you know, you get the hard stuff done out of the way. But the problem is this J channel here in the wall this is where the steel is going to go into the corner and that's going to, you know, kind of clean everything up. I can't put the stone up against it because it's going to be hard to get this steel in after the fact. So I'm going to have to now concentrate on getting the steel through this wall into the J channel before we go any further on stone around the fireplace. So we're finally going to get this, um, the roof standing seam here on the porches installed. At least we're going to start it. It's actually closer to the end of the day. we got some rain coming, so we're just going to try and do what we can to get started. But the reason we held off on this was mainly because we wanted to have um, the ability to go up there and install the windows and kind of do, you know, what we had to do without damaging this. We wanted the gutter guys to get up there and install the gutter without walking across this metal you know after it's been installed the unfortunate thing is we can't do our side steel up there above the porch until this steel is on because there's a transition trim up there at the sidewall where it flashes from roof to sidewall and that can't be installed until after the roof metal is down so we'll the process will be the roof steel here the standing seam we'll then do our z closure that'll seal this off give us a nice watertight connection and a place to lock on our um, connection trim then we can install the steel here on the wall all right so the rain's just starting to come down it's like 4 30 so we're going to start cleaning up but the good thing is I got these first couple pieces on. We're now around that corner, and there's going to be a lot of details to share with you guys, so stay tuned if that's some information you want to know how we handle that. But the rest of this is going to be pretty standard, uh, you know, metal standing seam roofing that we've already done, so I'll probably just get through that, and then we'll, we'll catch up with you on the next detail. All right. So now that we have our standing seam here on the porch, this detail here, we've got to have a connection detail flashed underneath our sidewall. So what we have is a open hemmed transition piece. And so this open hem right here is gonna lock onto a piece of Z flash, but first we have to figure out exactly where that's gonna be. So we wanna make sure that running at the right plane. And then we're just gonna go ahead and mark right on the face where the face of this trim hits our rib. So one of the tedious parts about the standing seam is if you're getting into Z flashings or this Z bar here that you have to install in between each rib and this is usually used to lock down a trim. So we have to make one of these that's gonna go in between each panel. It's a lot of work because you gotta cut them all down to size and then you have to make some cuts, do some bends, and then this is gonna get a double beaded butyl tape underneath of it and it's gonna get screwed down in, be each, in between each panel. Now what I'm going to do is, because I've learned this, uh, do a little bit of almost like assembly line. I'm just going to make a mark down here. This is the one that I want. Okay. 
And I'm just going to make these marks. And I've already marked one side, so now what I can do, I'm going to bend it over. Now I can just line this piece up with my mark, and I can make a mark without having to pull out a tape measure exactly where I want to be. And one thing that you're going to notice is that when I make these, when I cut the left side, my left, I'm going to use my greens. And then when I come over here and cut my right side, I use my reds. And that is because when I make these cuts right here, you see how it pulled this up? That helps me when I need to make this bend in like so. Just a little tip. And I got about 40 of these to make. All right, time to go install those. So I like to just pull this uh, the tape paper over and you can see I'm just overlapping the last Z-bar, shoving this in here and lining up just off the edge of that mark. And I'll come back through and put screws in this, but for now I like to just go through, get all of these placed. Once again, kind of just doing the assembly line work, but making sure that you get those kind of pushed in there real nice. And this process is, you know, one of the main, you know, contributing factors to having that leak-proof, fastener-free roof, because a lot of times on this detail, even we do it because we're doing a, an exposed fastener, is this trim is going over top of our ribbed roof, and then we're just screwing right down into ribs. Now that's good, the, the washer on that screw should last and it should do its job, but this is a nice guarantee because all of our fasteners will be up underneath the flashing and not allowing anywhere for water to get at them and do uh, work over time. All right, so here on the end where we have this panel that wraps around, um, this area right here we left on purpose a little bit bigger instead of running this rib right to the end so that we can detail this appropriately. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow my side flash down and then I'm going to mark where this face is. And what I've got to do is I've got to get a piece of this Z flash around this corner. First thing I'm going to do is just kind of eyeball where this is at so I can mark the location of that return. Because we want this to be a one piece. Now the problem is we don't want this Z sticking out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where I want this, which is, let's say this is the bottom. And I'll show you. Okay, so now I've got this guy here and this is going to fit right in here, but I got to do something with this guy here. You'll notice I left this long 
to travel back. It's actually going to end up getting tucked in behind the bend up on the side. That way, if any water comes down this outside, it's going to be forced to continue down. So what I've got to do is take this Z and I'm going to turn it into a C. I'm going to bend them over like so. So now we're going to take this here, get it into place. And the problem is I can go ahead and take a screw right there, but it's hard to get into this little location because I've got this top here. So just take yourself your snips, give yourself a little notch out and use a little bit of a longer bit. That way you can get in there and cut that. So now this piece of trim that you're gonna see us do next is gonna cover all this up. It's gonna have something solid to sit on and water can't get back here because of that double beaded butyl tape. Say that four times fast. Double beaded butyl tape, double beaded butyl tape, double beaded butyl mastic tape. Okay, all right, there's our Z flash. Time for connection trim. So all of these standing seam trims for the no fastener roof, they've got these open one inch hems. And this is where this really comes into play. You've probably been watching us do this thinking, how is it all gonna go together? Well, Greg, let's show them. <laughs> now, one thing I've done is on this end, you can see I've got a bend. So that's gonna go around my wall and I've got a bend here. And that's gonna go over top of that reverse uh, Z flash that we flipped around. So Greg, um, the important thing is we don't wanna go too low. We wanna kinda go up high, go up high all the way and then bring it down till it just barely snaps over and then we'll go, that way we don't scratch the panel any, you know? There. It is definitely, okay, here, wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's show our friends our trick. If you noticed, all the overlaps are left to right. So if I get mine first, they'll naturally slide in. Ooh, you came up with that, didn't you? No, I actually did know that. Okay, now it's all you. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna take it your way. Mm -hmm. That looks beautiful. Where does breeze come from? Mm, not like I'm not going to it. No, not at all. But, okay, now I'm blowing everything over. So check that out, guys. Isn't that sick? I mean, that is awesome. No fasteners, locked on, not going anywhere. It's waterproof, so no water can get in there. No wind-driven wind rain. Wind-driven rain? No wind-driven rain gonna go who there. <laughs> Good Lord. So this is gonna give us that nice clean detail. Uh, this is what I really wanna do on our ridge cap because it's just perfect, it's held down. We just gotta find a good solution for this type of system for our ridge cap to lock on that we, we feel really good about for ventilation. And we're gonna find it, we are, and then we're gonna do it and it's gonna look Awesome. All right, for this last piece here, I went ahead and put this temporary rake trim. I can always pop it off after the fact. This is what goes on. Once again, open hem, goes over that bend up that we made on our panel, locks on, and then we're gonna close this hem down here. And that's what's gonna create uh, the finished lock. It's gonna not allow it to go anywhere. But for now, all I really want this here for back on there is so that I can get a measurement for this last piece of trim because I need this piece of trim on in order to finish the details on this wall. Greg, I am 12 and 5 eighths in, height. Yeah, in, and I'm going to give you the tight measurement 
No, no, I'm going to give you off of my half inch square, okay? I want it to be as easy as possible. And 42 and a quarter is your top. So you want to go above that, obviously. I'm in love with the principal. Well, it was definitely nice to see one of these porch roofs completed. We got that steel on the wall around a window. And it's nice to just see some of these details come alive. We still got a ton of work to do. But whenever you punch something and, you know, check it off the list, it just feels really good and it motivates you to keep going. So we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow. And we're going to keep going on this porch detail, sidewall detail. And we're going to be moving to that end wall where all those windows are real quick.